a printing company turns mask maker. To venture into something new here immediately. A multinational shifts priorities to focus on hygiene products. Why a pivot in business might be the answer to thriving in uncertain times. They have to use whatever resources they have to switch to another uh, kind of a product or service. As demand shrinks for some products, business is booming for others. 89 million masks, 2.9 billion liters of sanitizer. Just in a month, just for healthcare workers. Globally, the market for masks is worth 166 billion US dollars. And for sanitizers, it is expected to reach 3.3 billion US dollars this year. But what if new pandemic restrictions are round the corner? And what happens to their investment if everything returns to normal? Companies have to be, do a bit of scenario planning around what changes are likely to be permanent. Can they make the pandemic pivot a success? Almost overnight, Marcus Ho found himself learning a new skill. He heads the fine art department at printing company AVS Technologies in Singapore. But deep in the pandemic, three weeks into the circuit breaker, he found himself learning to make a much sought after commodity, masks. I would say scary. It's totally brand new. Product. The first few nights were challenging, I will admit. Normally, your body isn't acclimatized to working a graveyard shift. So, when you're supposed to be asleep, but you're actually out there checking masks, packing, producing. I was in charge of the QC and the packing. So, whereas my other colleagues, they were in charge of manning the machines, and then there's others who are doing the calibration of the machine. AVS Technologies has been in the business for 30 years. The family-owned company focuses on printer distribution and printing. We are profitable all year round, so I think we are doing well uh, before the pandemic. But all that changed as the pandemic hit the 2.5 trillion US dollar global trade show industry worldwide. Exhibitions and conferences were dropped. AVS Technologies supplies this industry with posters, banners, and fine art printing. It was badly hit when 70% of events in Singapore were cancelled. I did tell the team, I said, be careful. Uh, this will be a big one. We have to try new things. And I said, we, we may have to venture into something new here immediately. We had a family uh, meeting with my, my, my dad and my brothers. We go to all the pharmacy and we couldn't get any masks. So we said, since we need it and we can export from here, might as well bring the equipment here, we build it here. The AVS team invested one million Singapore dollars in three machines to produce adult and child-sized masks. But that was only the start. We had to, to find a space first. And then after that, we need to clean up the space. Some of the technical terms with the machine, with the mask, uh, like the ultrasonic, Cao Sen Po in Chinese, we had to learn. We had to translate with uh, you know, all the different softwares available uh, and try to figure out how to, to get the whole thing done. The most important part is that the team never gave up. Before the machine arrived, we already taken pre-orders. They had to make 370,000 masks. The machines arrived in May. Every day, working 24-7, they churned out 40,000 masks. But Kelvin had to reject several batches, adding to costs. It took a month to settle into the new business, 
from sourcing of the machines to smooth operations. When they finally hit their target, they had another problem. Delivery. We need to deliver all this within three days, more than 1,000 orders uh, within three days. We are definitely not prepared with external corrugated box to pack the mask into another box to, to deliver. We had a fleet of 20 taxis to help us to do the delivery within the three-day frame. 1,500 orders delivered in three days. A bigger problem loomed. By the time AVS Technologies was churning out their masks, retail outlets were saturated with cheaper masks. And it would be a long wait to get onto online platforms. If I had a chance to rebuild this whole thing again, I will choose a good machine that is reliable, that can have a reliable output that is consistent. I think companies need to um, be very careful about pivoting because uh, pivoting can also get you into trouble. So the first thing, first point is, they need to think about how they can reorganize or rearrange their resources. The second point is that they need to do it in a way that doesn't affect in a negative fashion their brand image. And then the third point, a pivot cannot be irreversible. It has to be something that you can change later. We have three types of companies in terms of pivoting strategies. They can no longer do what they were doing. And of course, they have to use whatever resources they have to switch to another uh, kind of a product or service. Then we have companies that oh, they have faced exactly the opposite problem. The pivoting is towards more how can you expand capacity uh, so that uh, you can serve that surge in demand. And then we have companies uh, that their demand has been dropping, but that there will be pent up demand for their products um, after the economy starts uh, recovering. And uh, there the pivoting needs to be different. The pivoting needs to be about uh, how can they put in place enough resources and capabilities to meet that pent up demand. For one large multinational, the challenge was to meet the surge in demand for hygiene products as sales in other areas dipped. Overnight, Unilever mobilized their R&D and supply chains. In five months, they increased their production capacity of hand sanitizers worldwide by 600 times. And in four months, they went from two factories worldwide making sanitizer to 57 with third-party partners. Formed a task force to really help unlock the supplies of critical hygiene products for consumers around the world looking at what we can do to repurpose our existing capability, repurpose our existing infrastructure. We make deodorants. Deodorants also contain a high amount of alcohol and therefore have some synergy with hand sanitizers. That ability to repurpose existing raw material is part of a productive pivot strategy. Unilever was able to use its existing technology and supplies to churn out a much sought after commodity. With newer and smaller brands entering the market, Unilever also ramped up marketing campaigns to reposition the Lifebuoy brand. It's a 100 year old brand started in UK. Lifebuoy runs a big global hand washing program. Lifebuoy entered over 50 markets and training and public education on hygiene protocols were developed. A really big change or pivot came next. We have gone outside the supermarket in a way, which traditionally has been our strength. A successful large format printing company, AVS Technologies, took the leap into a brand new business when the pandemic hit. Kelvin Mum chose to pivot into making masks during this crisis as pandemic-induced closures affected his core business. After smoothing out production, it was time to sort out an online presence. I think to set up a new brand without knowing uh, what to expect is a big challenge for us. In three days, his graphics designer created a brand and designed their own sales channel. 
To make the offers attractive, they bundled other products online. Since social media banned the advertising of products that appeared to be profiting from the pandemic, they promoted their brand with t-shirts and bags. We thought that we could maximize all our equipment to test the capabilities where we can go and what are the new areas that we can work on. Example like this is a tote bag that we make so that we could actually practice and promote social distancing. But selling masks online was not as straightforward. We need to beef up our customer services, uh, how we're going to handle online um, kind of reactions. Uh, we need to make sure that we are ready for uh, returns and all these things. We need to, logistically, we need to be ready. This is the string wrapping machine that uh, we responded through the feedbacks of our clients. Um, a lot of them were concerned about hygiene of the packaging without bags inside. We managed to bring in from our Malaysia plant uh, this machine relatively quickly within the next five days and, and we resolved the issue. It was also a way for them to use their downtime in printing to make new products. So, you see these two longer loops here? You slot it in like that. So, this, this will be um, adjustable. So, let's say it changes a uh, user. You can easily change it to fit. Okay. Changing to fit the scenario is a strategy that has worked for AVS. The next challenge, then, certification. Uh, so we went one step ahead to, to go for ISO certification. In fact, uh, we just completed the audit and we have it passed. The first step for Unilever, to identify products in demand and boost production. It was even able to create something new, a spray sanitizer that worked on skin and other surfaces. We then made that available around the world, starting first with Australia, with Southeast Asia, with parts of Europe, in India. And we found that it was a great success for consumers because A, it served the immediate need. It was quick. Within a few weeks, we started uh, producing the product. We were able to ship it around the world. And what consumers, we later on realized in the crisis was that the virus can stay not only on your hand, it can also stay on surfaces. Therefore, you need to disinfect surfaces and the spray can serve sort of as a two-in-one multi-purpose product. Next, Unilever did something that's not usually part of the business. It provided guidance on how best to use its sanitizers and cleaning products. This became part of the training Grab was providing for its riders. And it formed partnerships in various countries. The partnership rose between Unilever Philippines and Grab is built on the collective action and shared advocacy. Because you've gone through proper training, because they're using the right brands, promoting safe hygiene and good habits, we're hoping that this helps build trust amongst consumers, build trust amongst even commuters, so that people can go about uh, performing their daily tasks in a safer way. This hygiene protocol is ensuring safety for people like delivery rider Homer Lazaro. He's been a grab rider for over two years. Despite many businesses being closed, he's still making a living. So, hindi lang naman kami nag-focus nung pandemic na hindi kami nag-focus lang sa food. Bagkos meron pa rin yung mga essential, nag-deliver kami. Mga forms, mga kailangan sa mga offices na pinabubuk ng mga, mga customer. And the partnership with Unilever means that he goes to work with peace of mind. Grab provides each partner driver and rider their own sanitization kit. Yung hygiene natin, lagi natin uh, uh, panatiliin na presentable tayo. So, bago naman magpunta sa mga customer. From rider to the restaurant to the customer. Safer Meals Philippines improves the food delivery industry's safety and hygiene standards. Conti's Bake Shop and Restaurant has been in business for 23 years. With the pandemic, they find themselves cleaning 12 to 16 times a day.
it's impossible to survive without these um, these products. We cannot even open the stores. So we make sure that we have enough supplies of that. So that has been a big change for us, which is we have gone outside the supermarket in a way, which traditionally has been our strength. So now doing partnerships, our partnerships program is something which is just beginning. We are now looking to work with other partners as the world reopens up, as people go back to school, go back to office, go back and travel. How do we ensure that at all steps, people are protected and they are safe? Now, it's time to take stock and look to the future. But what do these companies need to consider? I think, you know, some of these trends um, are, are permanent. It's been five months since AVS Technologies took the plunge into making masks. An entirely new business for the company. Multinational Unilever has boosted production and distribution of its sanitizers and hygiene products to deal with the new demands of living with the pandemic. I think, you know, some of these trends uh, are, are permanent. There could be some trends that uh, particularly in the digitalization space where, you know, right now we're seeing a lot of things are done digitally. But when COVID gets, restrictions get lifted, you know, people still want to see a face, they still want to look person in the eye to, through, to do a deal and transact. Therefore, we anticipate that some of that will still move back to some of the old norm. Um, but because there's now comfort in getting things done digitally, it's going to be perhaps a different portfolio of, of kind of a, you know, the way, the channel that we, we deliver the service is going to be different. So I think companies have to be do a bit of scenario planning around what changes are likely to be permanent or even advanced going forward. And some, some may be, you know, what would they kind of evolve uh, into a new harmonised way of delivery post-COVID. Homer accepts 14 to 16 bookings a day. He could be delivering cake or buying medicine for senior citizens who do not want to leave home. He is earning more now than two years ago when he worked overseas. Nakakagalak na makatulong ka sa mga tao nga kahit alam mo na hindi dila, hindi natatakot sila tapos ikaw nandito ka para tumulong para sa kanila. And people like Homer help Conti's restaurant boost online delivery which has become a mainstay they want to develop. We've been a very traditional brand um, and because of our partnership or because of the delivery, um, we were able to open our doors to cater to younger markets who are more tech savvy. So our market actually broadened. There will be many things like work from home, online ordering, um, that will be a permanent change in our habits. Unilever and Grab that have the obligation to drive the industries, to train the merchants, to drive commerce, and to promote peace of mind uh, through the kind of network and systems and products that we offer. Good evening, ito na nga po pala. Thank you, nakagigas ako ah. Okay po ma'am. Thank you ma'am. Salamat. Ingat. Take care. Companies that are tapping into the sanitation or peace, I think, should find a way to bake that into the habits of people. So, uh, so that people carry on doing this even after this fear of the pandemic has receded. Um, most of us, for example, wash our hands when we uh, come home, right? Um, but this is now a heightened level, right? So we're using uh, wipes, we're, we're using sand, uh, products to make sure that our hands are clean constantly. It'd be good for us, right? We'll fall a little less and this could be part of the habit creation. So if you're in that space, I would encourage companies to think about how do you create habits with your customers so that that lasts a lot longer than the pandemic. And that's, that's possible to do. And that's what I would urge them to think about. Kelvin's mask production line has stabilized from a round-the-clock operation with two shifts to a regular single production line. Printer sales also haven't come to a standstill as he feared. Initial phase was scary for us because everything just stopped. Uh, whole country closed the door. Uh, everything was just scary for us. 
we, we had a bad feeling until the year end and, and we were like, oh, okay, we're going to have zero everything. But that was not the case. Uh, during pandemic, um, we sold a lot of different machines to smaller businesses. Kelvin is also seeing a resurgence in the printing business. Marcus is off the graveyard production line for masks and back to overseeing fine art printing. He's preparing for an international photography exhibition, although he's ready anytime to step back into the mask making facility. So I guess um, the question about whether we can, how we're going to manage the manpower when the print business is back online, well, I guess that's a good problem for us. I, I'm not too worried about it. The guys are always ready to go back into their positions as and when it's needed for them. And a year from now? The shoe is important that... uh, yes, it was a big sum of money that we throw in um, to have assurance for all Singaporeans. I think if... Can I recoup the money? I think no. Uh, we barely, barely make it to halfway point or, you know, somewhere. Uh, it will be a long haul. So we are in here for a long haul. We are not looking at a short term to say that I want to make sure I earn back this amount of money that we throw in. Going international is the only way forward for all Singapore companies because we are, we are too small. We need to go out. His masks are now sold in Malaysia and Canada. He is awaiting certification to sell in Australia and the US. As for Marcus, he's designed his own art piece that's won an award. He calls it Circuit Breaker Performances. <laughs> 